Another day, another media figure rams home the cosy COVID consensus. This time, alleged comedy actress Jennifer Aniston, famous for the sitcom Friends, a movie called We're the Millers, and uh, the sitcom Friends. She has said that she has cut off anybody in her life that hasn't had the vaccine. So the woman from Friends loses friends, unfriending friends. Well, I would say that those former friends have had a lucky escape. Because anybody that cancels you based upon your vaccine status, your views on lockdowns, or indeed any other moral or political issue shouldn't be in your life in the first place. This week, it's been reported that the American news network CNN have fired three of their staff for going to work unvaccinated. All of which means that the agenda of forced vaccination, sorry, sorry, heavy encouragement is now at state level, at corporate level and with Miss Aniston's intervention at personal level too. Even your closest buddies are now keen to get a needle in your arm. The medical status of my friends and indeed colleagues and fellow citizens is none of my business. I couldn't care less and I never will. I'm pro-vaccine. I've had both jabs and I would say go for it. But ultimately, what you do with your own body is your affair. And in further evidence that another casualty of the pandemic is irony, the Museum of Human Rights in Canada have gleefully posted a tweet in which they announce that only vaccinated citizens will be allowed to go into their venue, thereby denying the human rights of the unvaccinated to attend their museum. You literally couldn't make it up. Now, here's the thing, folks. We've got to live with this virus. And the only way in which we can do that is to accept that some people will never have the vaccine. Just as we will never achieve zero COVID, we will never achieve 100% vaccination. Why, for example, do we roll the dice with young people for a virus that poses the vast majority of them precious little physical threat? That's inexplicable to me. And blackmailing young adults with things like the right of entry into a nightclub is unforgivable. Meanwhile, in London, Mayor Khan wants to make mask wearing the law, even though the evidence that they have any effect is debatable. So why would you impose a measure that doesn't definitively work? Because it's all about control. The state wants to control you. Big business wants to control you. And your meddling neighbour next door and Hollywood actresses ten a penny want to control you. Have the jab, stay at home, wear a mask. What is the recurring theme of all of this? We're being bullied. And dissenting voices are shouted down, unfriended and vilified. Well, you know, as well as I do, there's only one thing you can do with a bully, and that's to stand up to them. If you don't want the jab, don't have one. And in places where masks are not mandated, and if you don't want to wear one, don't wear one. Personal choice, remember that? And if standing up to the bullies and asserting your fundamental human rights causes you to lose friends, then count your lucky stars because they weren't your friends in the first place. Now, the governor of the Bank of England has clashed with former colleagues in the House of Lords who have said that quantitative easing is something to which the bank are now addicted. Too right it is. All too often in the course of this pandemic, I have regretted our relative wealth and triple A credit rating because it has allowed us to bankroll this ruinous 17 month lockdown experiment. I have looked with envy at countries that didn't have the resources with which to pay people to stay at home and inflate their national debts. Those countries were left with little option but to protect their most vulnerable and get on with life. Strange how many of those countries have a lower per capita COVID death toll than us. Crumbs. It's almost like the measures didn't work. Notwithstanding damaged lives and a land grab of our civil liberties, the money is the other great scandal of this pandemic. National debt has topped two trillion quid for a nasty virus, yes, but one non-fatal to the majority of the population. And my, when my youngest son was very small, we were talking about money. And he said, it's fine, Dad, just take your credit card and money comes out of the machine in the wall. Well, it seems the Bank of England take the same view as my then six-year-old, that there is such a thing as free money. But there isn't. Because the endless printing of cash depletes our future economic firepower, depresses confidence in the UK economy from the international bond markets to whom we may have to go begging in the years to come. And it's inflationary. You know as well as I do, there is no such thing as free money. So it's time to get on a path to recovery, to stimulate the economy 
and to begin to live within our means. Debt is essentially economic quicksand. And if we don't change course soon, we will sink to the point where we don't return. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.